all these little good property deals in Cape Town in the 500 to 700,000 Rand price range? We've been seeing a lot of questions lately around where to buy a property in Cape Town as a beginner investor and whether affordable property investments actually still exist. When you think of decent property investments in Cape Town, you might be thinking about properties well upwards of a million Rand. Like this, or perhaps like this, or even this. And whilst they might be great investments, they're not really accessible to new investors just starting out. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at a real life case study of an excellent property deal in Cape Town, which was just secured by John for under 700,000 Rand. John is a family member that we've been mentoring for a few years now. And since he's just closed this deal, we thought we'd share all the details with you to show you that it is still very much possible to get these types of deals even in late 2023. And not only that, John managed to get over 100,000 rands off the property list price and secure a 100% bond on the property. Not bad at all. Now, if you want to see more of this type of content, please let us know either through commenting on the video or by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Your feedback not only keeps us motivated, but more importantly, it helps us to produce videos on the topics which are relevant to you. Okay, so here's the property John has just purchased. A neat little two-bedroom apartment in a popular complex in Oak Glen, which is in Belleville, Cape Town. We're going to give you a quick walkthrough of the typical process we follow when buying a new apartment like this. So from the property listing, you can see it's a two-bed, one-bath, 42 square meter unit, and the asking price is 799,000 Rand. If we scroll through the photos quickly, you can see the unit looks to be in average condition. It'll likely need a few repairs and a coat of paint at minimum, so we will use this as a bargaining tool when we make an offer. The exterior, however, looks quite attractive. The body corporates seem to do a good job of keeping the complex clean and tidy. Now, right off the bat, based on our knowledge of the area, we know the asking price is a touch on the high side, especially for a unit that isn't in pristine condition. So we know there's definitely some wiggle room here for negotiation. The first thing we do is pick up the phone and have a thorough chat with the sales agent. We want to find out as much as we can about the property, including why the owner is selling and how long the property has been on the market for. We want to know if there's a lease in place, when it expires and what the current rental is. Having an existing quality tenant means you have cash flow from day one. And we also ask some detailed questions about the condition of the unit and if there are any major defects that we need to be aware of. The seller has to declare any defects that they are aware of. Once we're satisfied with everything, we request for the agent to send us all the relevant documentation on the property. Things like body corporate financials and rules, the current lease agreement where relevant, rates and levy statements, more photos if they have, and very importantly, a comparative market analysis or CMA for short. The CMA is like having the model answers to an exam before you write it. It shows you comparative sales in the area that you're looking at, including the actual body corporate that the property is in. So you can quickly see what properties like the one that you are interested in have recently sold for. And a huge benefit is that if you get the CMA from Lightstone, which costs less than 200 Rand, you can get a bunch of other valuable insights. For example, you can see what the seller paid for the property that you are intending to buy, meaning you can judge whether there's room for negotiation on the sales price. Powerful, right? Now, once we receive all the requested documentation from the agent, we can start doing our due diligence. Looking at the CMA, there are four recent comparative sales we can reference. These four 41 square meter apartments. As you can see, they sold for between 740,000 Rand and 850,000 Rand, which is quite a broad range. Now the unit that we are interested in is an average condition, so we're definitely going to operate on the lower end of the range in terms of market valuation. In other words, we immediately know that we are not going to pay more than 740,000 Rand for this unit. And we're absolutely going to offer less than that, since after our discussion with the agent, we now know that we are dealing with a motivated seller. Next, we take a look at the body corporate financials, checking things like how much cash they have on hand, that they don't have too much debt in the form of outstanding levies, and that they are operating profitably. We also like to read through the minutes of the last AGM, just to get insight into any issues in the complex or any big maintenance expense that might be planned. This could mean additional monthly levies being charged to all owners, so we definitely want to be aware of this before we buy. Once we're satisfied with all the information, it's time to calculate the return on investment. So we plug all the figures into our investment spreadsheet to see how the expected returns compare to our other property investments and whether we're happy with the potential returns on offer. In this case, we obviously haven't yet secured the deal, so we don't have perfectly accurate figures. But we know that we're probably not willing to pay much more than 700,000 Rand for the property. And we know that the expected rent for a property like this, based off some quick market research and discussions with the agent, is 7,500 Rand. If the unit is tenanted, you can also refer to the lease agreement. But bear in mind that the rent an existing tenant is paying 
can sometimes be under market value. So always do your homework to get an accurate expected rental. Okay, so this property would offer a rent to value ratio of over 1%, which is very good for a quality apartment like this. After plugging in all our other figures, we can see that despite the excellent rental return, we will still have a monthly shortfall initially. But this is expected for our strategy, given that we focus on buying quality properties in high growth areas. And remember that the majority of the shortfall is tax deductible. Now those of you who have watched our property strategy video know that we specialize in properties just like this for quite a few reasons. Check out this video if you haven't already, but this particular unit fits our requirements perfectly. But if you're looking for property investments which can offer you a positive cash flow from day one, there are definitely deals available. But you'll almost certainly sacrifice some capital growth potential with this type of strategy. And the management of the property on an ongoing basis is generally more involved, since you'll likely be dealing with multiple tenants in the same property. If you'd like more information on multi-let, cash flow positive property, fellow South African YouTuber Louis Reynard has some great videos on the topic. We'll put a link to his video in the description below. Okay, so coming back to the return spreadsheet, it's important to understand how much capital we're going to need for the deal. Assuming we're able to secure a 100% bond and we won't need any form of deposit on the property, we still need capital to pay for the bond and transfer attorney fees and potentially some upfront maintenance costs. Property24 has a handy bond and transfer cost calculator and after plugging in our figures, we get an approximation of the costs due. Now you should always be paying less than these figures because you should always ask both your bond and transfer attorneys for a discount on their fees. Even if it's your very first deal with them, always ask for a discount. After all, if they look after you, you'll be far more likely to bring them more business in future. So it's a win-win situation. Okay, so at this stage, everything looks good and we're happy to move forward with the deal. Now, if you live in Cape Town and you're a new investor, you should always view the property to physically inspect the area, the complex and the unit itself. So set up an appointment with the agent and go do your homework. But if you live in a different province, for example, you may not have the ability to easily view the property in person. One option you have is for a friend or family member to view on your behalf, assuming they live near to the property you're interested in. But if not, another option you have is to set up a video call with your agent and get a full live walkthrough of the complex and the apartment. Now, ideally, you want to have existing knowledge of the area and some of the suitable complexes in the area if you're going to be buying investment property at a distance like this. We'll soon be uploading a video to help you safely buy a property from a different province without the need to view it physically. It will require some upfront research, but it'll mean that going forward, you can buy investment property in a different part of the country with a high degree of confidence. So keep a lookout for this video. Okay, so in John's case, he didn't need to physically view the property because he's dealing with an estate agent that he trusts and he knows the area and complex well. John also intended to put in a cheeky offer. And so if he gets a property at a bargain price, he's not too concerned about having to spend a few extra rand on some additional maintenance that he might have overlooked. So John went ahead with a deal and after some firm negotiations, he managed to secure the property for only 675,000 rand. That is a whopping 124,000 rand lower than the list price. So John managed to get himself a pretty incredible deal and his return on investment and rent to value ratios ended up being far better than expected. The monthly expected shortfall is also slightly better than expected and because of the great purchase price, there ended up being some equity available in the property immediately. Now remember that you make money when you buy a property and because John got a great deal, he acquired enough equity in the property to fully offset all the purchase and maintenance costs. He acquired around 65,000 Rand worth of equity in this deal against a capital outlay of around 60,000 Rand for purchase fees and once off repair costs. So his net equity position has actually increased ever so slightly with the purchase of this property. And this is based off a conservative property value figure, which might be slightly higher once the repairs are done. Now even though you don't see this money immediately, it's incredible to know that you essentially acquired a property for free, all things considered. So as you can see, affordable quality investments do still exist in Cape Town. In fact, there are loads of options for new investors who want to dip their toes in the property market. Here are just a few options for sale in the 500 to 600,000 Rand price range at the time of filming. Now, obviously not all these options meet our particular strategy, nor are we specifically endorsing any of them. We just want to show you that there are quite a few options available if you take the time to look. And remember, the list price is not the market value of the property, nor is it the final sales price. Like we showed in our case study, John got a 124,000 Rand discount off the list price of this new property. So even if you see a property listed slightly above your budget, don't immediately dismiss it as being out of reach. 
always remember that everything is negotiable. There's never any guarantee you'll secure a particular deal at the price you want, but you absolutely must try. Persistence is the name of the game, and if you're prepared to fight for it, you will eventually find the right deal. Thanks for watching.